speakers, I'll take a moment to say, I'm Yaya. And I'm Victoria, coming at you each Wednesday. Good morning. Get ready for ABE TV. This show will be fun, so please do not flee. Our specials class today is C3. Hey, that sounds really good to me. It's Dr. Seuss's birthday. We have a special show. With the book read together. And facts to make your brain grow. We hope you enjoy this. So please tune right in. There's so much to do. We had better begin. All celebration money is due today. Get the money to your teacher. Don't stop on the way. You'll, re you'll really must hurry to make sure that you don't get stuck in a flurry. Second grade is leading the pack, but first grade isn't too far back. Fourth is next with a few bucks less, but who will win it is anyone's guess. Third is doing well. They could still win it, but fifth and sixth grade are barely in it. All the money is due today, but if you bring some tomorrow, we won't turn it away. Wearing this hat makes me want to rhyme. I know, that happens all the time. Grades three through six have I step all this week and next. When you're answering a question, look back in the text. When you're in the hallway, walk and don't rush. Remember we're testing, so we all need to hush. I don't think I can rhyme anymore. If we don't take a break, I'll be running for the door. Our birthday stars are Nathan Katulik, Aiden Ozzianer, Ronan Sweeney, and Mikhail Wilson. Go down to the library for a bookmark, high five, or hug from Miss Donaldson and have a great birthday. The lunch, choices, the lunch choices are a country chicken bowl with a roll, yogurt and a cheese stick, and goldfish crackers or a fruit plate. Our sides will be spinach, celery sticks, and fruit. Today's joke comes from a mysterious AB joke writer. What did one elevator say to the other? I don't know. What? Why are you so down? <laughs> Keep your best jokes coming. Turn in jokes in the wooden box across from the music room. It's coming back like a fever. I think it's time. To continue the rest of our show in rhyme. Now sit back and listen. Because we have a rare treat. I wonder what we'll see. On Mulberry Street. And to think I saw it on Mulberry Street by Dr. Seuss. When I leave home to walk to school, Dad always says to me, Marco, keep your eyelids up and see what you can see. But when I tell him where I've been and what I think I've seen, he looks at me and sternly says, Your eyesight's much too keen. Stop telling such outlandish tales. Stop turning minnows into whales. Now, what can I say? When I get home today. All the long way to school. And all the way back. I've looked, I've looked, and I've kept careful track. But all that I've noticed, except my own feet, was a horse and a wagon on Mulberry Street. That's nothing to tell of. That won't do, of course. Just a broken down wagon that is drawn by a horse. That can't be my story. That's only a start. I'll say it that a zebra was pulling that cart. And that is a story that no one can beat when I say that I saw it on Mulberry Street. Yes, the zebra is fine, but I think it's a shame. Such a marvelous beast with a cart that is so tame. The story would really be better to hear if the driver I saw there were a terrier tear. A golden blue chariot is something to meet. Uh, Rumbling like thunder down Mulberry Street. No, it won't do at all. A zebra's too small. A reindeer is better. He's fast and he's sleek. And he'd look mighty smart on old Mulberry Street. Hold on a minute. There's something wrong. A reindeer hates the way it feels. To pull a thing that runs on wheels. He'd be much happier instead. If he can pull a fancy sled. Hmm, a reindeer and a sleigh. Say, anyone can think of that. Jack or Fred or Joe or Nat. Say, even Jane could think of that. But it isn't too late to make one little change. A sleigh and an elephant? There's something strange. I'll pick one with plenty of power and size. Blue one with plenty of fun in his eyes. And then, just to give him a little more tone. Have a Raja with rubies perched high on a throne. Say, that makes a story that no one can beat. When I say that I saw on Mulberry Street. But now I don't know. It still doesn't seem right. An elephant pulling a thing that's so light would whip it around in the air like a kite. But he looks simply grand with a great big brass band. A band that is so good should have someone to hear it. But it's going so fast that it's hard to keep near it. I'll put on a trailer. I know they won't mind. 
If a man sits and listens, I'll hitch John behind. But now is it fair? Is it fair what I've done? I bet those wagons weigh more than a ton. That's really too heavy, a load for one beast. I'll give him some helpers. He needs two, at least. But now what worries me is this. Marbury Street runs into bliss. Unless there's something I can fix up, there'll be an awful traffic mix-up. It takes police to do the trick. To guide them through where traffic stick. It takes the police to do the trick. They'll never crash now. They'll race at top speed. With Sergeant Mulvaney. Himself in the lead. The mayor is there, and he thinks it is grand. And he raises his hat as they dash by the stand. The mayor is there, and the aldermen too. All waving big banners. A red, white, and blue. And that is a story that no one can beat. What I say that I saw on Mulberry Street. With the wool of its model and the airplane appeal. And dumps out confetti while everyone cheers. And that makes a story. That's really not bad. But it still could be better. Suppose that I add. A Chinese person who eats with sticks. A big magician doing tricks. A ten foot beard that needs a comb. No time for more, I'm almost home. I swung around the corner. And dashed through the gate. I ran up the steps. And I felt simply great. For I had a story that no one could beat. And to think that I saw it on Marbury Street. But Dad said quite calmly, Just draw up your stool and tell me the sights on the way home from school. There was so much to tell, I just couldn't begin. Dad looked at me sharply and pulled at his chin. He frowned at me sternly from there in his seat. Was there nothing to look at, no people to greet? Did nothing excite you or make your heart beat? Nothing, I said, growing red as a beet. But a plain horse and wagon on Mulberry Street. The end! Listening to the story was a wonderful time. I love how the students gave us an earful of rhymes. Theodore Geisel was the author's real name. He and Dr. Seuss are one and the same. This book was his first, made in 1937. When it was when it finally was published, it must have felt like heaven. Now that's uh, that. Now that's all for us. We really must go, so Mrs. Powell and her first graders can take over the show. Good morning, Amy Beverly Stars. We would like to continue on our Dr. Seuss special day and share some quotes from him. My favorite is. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself any direction you choose. And one more, because we know first graders really like to rhyme. The more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you'll go. Now I'd like to have my first graders introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Sincere. Hi, my name is Xavier. Hi, my name is Delbert. What's up? My name is Trey. What's up? My name is Douglas. Hi, my name is Nathan. Hi, my name is Jake Wolf. So now please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. 